Welcome to Changelog, where we explore the latest updates, enhancements, and changes to New Relic itself. In each episode, we dig into new features and functionalities as told by the people who envisioned, shaped, and even coded them. We discuss the inspiration and the data behind the development, as well as common use cases and applications. I'm Leon Adato, one of the New Relic DevRel advocates, and with me today is our Solution Strategy Director, Kevin Downs. Welcome back, Kevin. How are you? Do it just finally, and thank you for having me again. And um, I know that we're here to talk about a specific topic, a much beloved and awaited topic that we're going to get to, but we are more than just people working at New Relic. We have a life outside the walls of the office. So I want to hear a little bit about who you are, what your title means, and then also what you do when New Relic isn't the thing that's you know sitting in front of you. Excellent. Thank you. So as a solution strategy director at New Relic, I have in-depth knowledge of the IT ops environment the cloud industry, and I work with customers and partners to assist in their cloud adoption journeys. I've been in the enterprise software industry for over 20 years, including 12 years as a customer facing road warrior solution architect going all over the country. But you asked me what I do in my spare time. Well, I'm an amateur woodworking tool collector. Let me tell you <laughs> what that means. Yeah, I know, I know. So I've been collecting tools for a long time now. I can do any project my wife needs to be done around the house. Not that it will get done correctly, just that I can do it. Now, Leon, I'm just going to assume you're the same way. We yeah. reserve the right to buy a new tool for a new project, right? That is that is the reason we take on projects, is in order to be able to buy a new tool, yeah. Yes, absolutely. So that's what I do in my spare time. As an interesting side note, um, as we're recording this, the HBO Max series, The Last of Us, uh, is just wrapping up. And one of the neat little tidbits that I picked up from the series was in episode three. Um, Nick Offerman was uh, one of the actors on there, and he was supposed to have been incredibly handy. He was a survivalist and a, a prepper and all that stuff. And Nick himself is also a tool guy. And so they, they dress the set with these tools and he kept using them. So in between takes, he would pick up the tools and he would fix things around the set because there's always something that has to get fixed or done whatever. So he'd be doing it. And then, you know, they'd start a scene and they like call cut and like, Nick, where did you put the hammers? Where did you put the whatever? He's like, it's over there. I'm working with it right now. So it's like when you have that in your blood, it doesn't matter what's going around you. Nope. You're going to do stuff like that. Okay. All right. That's, you know, that's fair. That's good stuff. Um, all right. So the reason why I say that this episode was uh, much awaited is because we actually recorded a version of this last year in preparation for um, Amazon Linux 2022. But then 2022 got delayed by Amazon and it became Amazon Linux 2023. And so rather than do bleeping our mouths, you know, where we said 22 and say 23 or whatever, we decided that we just going to have this whole conversation again because it was a good conversation. And we thought we would do that. Um, and as somebody who really has loved Linux since I, I think I was installing Slackware on uh, an old 386 back in like 19... Oh, 92 enough. off of 15 five and a quarter inch floppies trying to compile the kernel like i've enjoyed linux for quite a while um i you know the fact that amazon recently announced a new version of linux optimized for aws obviously makes me happy but simply having it exist doesn't seem to be like big news or a reason for us to come out with a whole new version so what are some things that customers are going to find significant about the Linux, the AWS, or AL2023, we'll refer to it that way. Like, what's significant about that? Yeah, this is a pretty big deal for um, for the community. Uh, this new version is based on Fedora, and it integrates with the latest AWS feature. It also offers a stable distribution for with long-term support. Now, this is the big deal, meaning AWS plans on a two-year major v uh, version cadence and quarterly updates for minor launches. Okay. All right, all right. So, so, and and it's been a while since the last version, yeah. right? Yeah, it's many been... many companies use the current though the one that was current as of you know a little bit ago, Amazon Linux version two. Now that was launched in 2018, so it's been a little bit. In That's addition, a, yeah, it's a dog's age in it in is, IT time, right? Yeah, 
in addition to the virgin uh, version, sorry, cadence um, I, I just mentioned, AL2023 has been optimized for Amazon EC2, meaning it comes well integrated with the latest AWS features, including supporting higher security standards to help meet compliance needs. Okay, yeah. Okay, and, and so I can easily see why, independent of what New Relic is doing about it, I can see why um, folks would be really excited about this update. And again, you know, uh, please update my operating system more than every five years. Like, I, you know, it needs it. So that's good. All right, I don't want to waste any more time. I'd like to actually see what we're doing, because really what we're talking about is installing New Relic into this environment. So let's go ahead and do a little bit of sharing. And so tell me what we're looking at here. What, what do we Absolutely. got going? I have the New Relic interface open, and what we're going to do is we're going to walk through a guided installation of an Amazon 2023 agent that I have running in the background. It's not yet been installed. The agent has not yet been installed, so let's go through that. So sure. let me show you the magic trick. There is nothing up my sleeve, so let's <laughs> oh. add my first host. And I'm going to add the New Relic infrastructure agent, so let's walk through this. It is Linux. And it's very simple. We're going to discover what the system is. New Relic does a lot of things in the background. Now this is great because it's just a one cop one command that you just need to copy. So I've copied it uh, and let's bring up my command shell and just do a little paste here. Mm -hmm. And let's see what happens. Now I'm gonna move this around a little bit so we can see the interactiveness between these two things. And while you're moving around, I just want to point out for those who are watching this who may not have gone through the New Relic install recently or at all, that this is the install. Like, this is it. This is not something special to, you know, AL2023. It's single command, you know, click, click, let it run, and and, and it's there. And, and it's starting to send in data. Yeah, and you'll, you'll start to see soon where the command prompt is integrated with the guided install. So now we're installing the infrastructure agent, and now you can see in the background that the interface from New Relic says it's installing the agent. It's mm -hmm. walking through all these things. It's installed the agent, and you can see that it is Amazon Linux 2023 down at the bottom. And that's it. It's done there, and now it says we're done. So let's go back and say, let's view my data. So let's pop that in. And that took roughly around 60 seconds, probably a little bit less, a little bit more, depending and it's a little boring. There's not much going on. <laughs> it just came in. It was an instance that wasn't doing anything, Leah. It's not we a would... workhorse for me. So, you know, on the one hand, we hope that everyone's environment comes in just this calm and sedate, but if if you did, then you probably wouldn't need us. So it's a catch-22 as far as that goes, but we certainly hope that the install is, is this smooth. Um, but yeah, there's not a lot to show. Yeah. I'm bringing in some data, so it's starting to come in as we go. So that's how you install the infrastructure agent on a one-off instance. It's, right. fa it's fairly simple, it's straightforward. Right, um, and obviously, um, if I have a thousand machines, I just have to do this like a thousand times in a row, right? I just tell my boss not to expect anything else out of me for the next week and a half. Exactly, in fact, Leon, that's the main reason why we employed you at New Relic here, <laughs> so that you can install agents on servers. Now, actually, so I just showed <laughs> off the guided install, which, to be fair, is the quickest way from within the New Relic platform to instrument an instance. Yeah. However, as AWS administrators know, there are many ways to launch an instance, from creating a golden image or pre-baking, or configuring an instance launch configuration, to bootstrapping and control tower, or use an automation service like CloudFormation, Elastic Beanstalk, or others. Right. Integrating the New Relic infrastructure monitoring agent into your favorite method will make sure you're monitoring your instances when they're launched. Now, I don't know about you, Leon, for those of us that launch EC2 instances on the fly to prove things, to win bar bets, and carry out various <laughs> tasks, I like to walk you through what, what I bars, do. Wait, what bars do you hang out in that launching an EC2 instance is a bar bet? It, like... it, you never know. You can do it from an iPad. It's fairly simple to do. Okay, what I want to do, right. I want to show you what I do when I launch an instance by hand. So is that okay if we do that? Yeah, absolutely. Let's, let's okay. take a look. So let's, um, let's, let me bring up another window here. And I've got um, Amazon console in the background. And you can see the instance that we just installed the agent running there. But what I'm going to uh -huh. do is I'm going to do a little proof here. A little, little what's in the pudding here. So let's give this a name. Let's call it, um, how about Leon? Fine. 2023. And we're going to give this one, how about five instances? You know, yeah, you're, you're, that's good. Now, 
I happen to already have an Amy built. What I did is I, you know, I didn't pre-bake it. The agent isn't on there. All I did is I installed HTTPD and I put some stress on there because I'm actually gonna use stress. So let's go all the way down to the bottom where we have those advanced details. And I'm gonna do a little quick scroll here, all the way down, and we have the user data. And as we know, mm -hmm. we can pop stuff in there. So what I have here is the bash commands, and these are the four bash commands that you want to use to install the agent. The extra commands right. I have in the bottom are just so we can put some stress on these systems so we get a little bit more you know fun data let me pop that right. in there so i'm gonna just i just want to pause for a second and say that for those people who are watching the instructions that we're going over are all going to be in the show notes in the youtube video and and all that stuff so you don't have to like pause the screen and and type rapidly or whatever um there's a copy pastable link that there's a link to copy pastable commands that you'll be able to have to be able to replicate this in your own environment Excellent. okay and these so, these are yeah. the commands that you can walk through from the installation documentation so these are the four commands that we walk you through on a manual installation so once you know how to do it manually you can put it in any automation tool you want but leon i told you i was doing a magic trick here so let's prove it up there i'm bringing up a 60 second clock let yep. me launch this and start this up all right so i suggest we pause here right and we'll get back in about 50 seconds perfect All right, we're getting close to the end here. All right, so let's get rid of that window. Let's uh, refresh the side. And you can see that I have some five, I have five new running instances over here on the right. Let me go back over here to New Relic, do a quick refresh, and magic trick happens. I now have five new instances over here. There they are. So let's, uh, we'll keep the screen up and we'll just chat a little bit. Let's uh, let's go to the next part of our, um, our chat here. Okay, we're, so- we're, we're at the bar, I just proved the bet. Right, <laughs> exactly. I owe you a drink. Okay, perfect. I still want to know what bars you hang out on that this is a bar bet. Most of the time it's like, you know, spit fire out of your face or do, you know, lighter tricks or things like that. So um, bar bets aside, I, I'm curious about how this fits into an overall observability solution. Um, you know, it, yes, we're making things, you know, we're, we're making an integration, but why wouldn't somebody watching this say, yeah, but I can do that myself? You know, why do they, why do people need New Relic in the mix? Right, so good, it's a really good question. An observability solution covers every component of your application's architecture. AWS offers Amazon CloudWatch, which as we all know, is the only way to monitor AWS services you use. However, an overall observability solution should include your full stack, not just yeah. cloud services. You'll want to monitor your customers and user experience for browser-based or mobile usage. This yep. also includes application log and infrastructure monitoring like we're showing off today. Now, yep. in addition, as for cl uh, cloud customers, integrating your AWS account with New Relic will add visibility for the cloud services you use into the New Relic platform. This would represent a full stack observability solution. And let's just face it, that isn't something that CloudWatch alone can do. Right, and and what I often remind folks is that um, first of all, one of the terms that at New Relic we like to use is in context. You know, whatever it is that we're showing you, whether it's security or um, you've got you know change tagging or you have uh, you know new information, it, it's all in context with everything else. And the other thing I remind people is that without it. I'm not saying that you can only use one tool in your life. There are going to be multiple tools, but you get to a point where the only way to understand what's happening in the environment is what I've affectionately started calling swivel chair integrations, where you've got four screens in front of you and you have to kind of do this to try to get a sense of what everything is and swing back and forth. So what New Relic is bringing to the table also is, you know, you care about your infrastructure, you care about your application, you care about your logs, you care about traces, you care about security, all of that. And you can see that happening in context with everything else to be able to identify, you know, what's going really well and why, what is maybe struggling a little bit and why, you know, what changed or what other pressures are happening along with it. So it's just something to keep in mind. Um, I love it. Okay, and how are how are our little uh, instances doing here? Let's Maybe see. let's uh, do a quick update here. And there we go. We uh, that stress test is showing me randomized uh, usage, and we can see we've got a couple um, high level CPU. 
Let's do a little um, sort here. And there uh -huh. we go. Now we're sorted on the highest one. So I've got some well, uh, fairly overused instances. We know they're fake, but this is what you do in the, uh, <laughs> if you have them as real. Uh, it's pretty cool. You know what we should do here, Leon? Let's do this. And I'm going to show off the tags because I want to prove that we are actually showing the Linux distribution, Amazon Linux 2023. There you go. Nice. All right. So that's, I mean, that's the thing. And, and you know, here at ChangeLog, we're not in it to create, you know, two hour videos every single month or, or whatever. You know, this is a nice, easy, short install. You're out the door. If you have a batch, you know, that you want to do, we've got a, a way to do, you know, a batch of devices. So this takes us sort of the lightning round. Um, what would you like the folks watching this to sort of walk away with? What else would you like them yeah. to know? Now, this is, this is pretty important. Um, so this is for our customers running Amazon Linux One instances and you know who you are. You are using <laughs> AL1. Please update to Amazon Linux 2, or let's be honest, let's move all the way up to 2023. Start testing your workloads out with yes. Amazon Linux 2023. Uh, as AWS enabled st ended standard support at the end of 2020 for Amazon Linux 1. So if you're upgrading from your old AL1 instances, now would be a great time to instrument them with, Am uh, with New Relic's infrastructure monitoring agent. And lastly, New Relic support for AL 2023 does include Graviton architectures, so you'll have any issues with those as well. Very cool. All right. Well, I want to thank you for taking some time to talk with me today and to have another amazing conversation. Thank you very much, Leon. I've enjoyed it. Awesome. I also want to thank everyone watching. There is an overwhelming choice of bingeable video content, not including The Last of Us, which is wrapped up, but all sorts of other stuff too. And we want to thank you for spending some of your precious binge time with us today. If you've enjoyed the show, please don't forget to subscribe so you can get notifications when new episodes drop. For New Relic Changelog, I'm Leon Adato.